So I'd like to start off by actually thanking Josh for getting me up here, finally, after three years. I'm usually around the second or third row eating brownies and not being up here. <laughs> so um, I'm Emily. I'm a front-end web designer and developer. I'm actually the only person up here tonight not from Sky, so <laughs> big surprise. Um, I work at a company called Mix. We're a web-based company um, working up in Harrogate, so a bit out of Leeds. And basically, we do work um, for... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we work with a lot of public sector um, people, so we do a lot of work for the NHS, um, educational sector, and um, other bits and bobs in between. But really what I want to talk about today is how I got into the industry. So I've been at Mix for two years. I came straight from university, so I've been here for, well, sort of like two years straight out of uni. And um, I've been from a developer into a designer. So it's just about what I want to talk today. It's about my creative process, what habits I picked up along the way, and how I changed my bad habits into good habits, and basically how I could recognise my habits. But yeah, so I don't have all the answers. So this is just my habits, how it worked for me, making it quite personal. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to start off by talking about a habit. So early on when I was thinking about my creative process, and I needed to make this connection. So obviously... Habits basically just make up my day. So the steps I take to get about how I come across a top project, how I be creative, and how I can get from A to B with a project. So a habit just obviously goes into a process. So everyone has their own process. It gets refined over the years, and we keep building it project after project. So when I talk about a creative pro process, I feel like every designer likes to keep their process a secret. Like it's a kind of secret recipe that everyone has in order to create their magic they have on the screen. So I feel like we need to kind of break down this barrier, talk about process more, talk about our habits more and how we can refine these and essentially grow and share it with other people. Um, so beginning when I was trying to understand my process, I wanted to focus on this word habit and what it actually means. So the word habit comes from habituate, which basically means to custom by frequent repetition or prolonged exposure. It means basically we just get used to something after being long around it for a period of time. So when we do the same work, we get used to it. We keep fitting in. We're doing it day after day. Um, we're in with our company. We're working with frameworks. And we have a set way of working, basically. So this is kind of the opposite to uni. So when I was at university, I was really used to just going, being free and um, creating anything I really wanted to do. Um, I didn't really have any restrictions. When you come into a company, sorry, you, um, you, really, you have these restrictions and it's kind of different from being able to have a clean slate and um, come about stuff from different angles. Um, but that's not usually bad. Sometimes picking up habits can be really good. So we learn from copying people, and well, those may have more experience than us. So after all, the reason humans have habits is that we learn something quickly. We learn these things so we can free up space for to learn other things. For example, maybe brushing our teeth in the morning. We learn that this is good, so we can free up space to do other things. Um, so sometimes habituation isn't bad, isn't good. Sorry. Um, we need to really figure out what the bad things are so that we can focus on the good. Um, this is a talk, obviously it's a TED talk because I'm speaking and I needed inspiration. Um, <laughs> I don't mind a bit of funk and soul. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Tony Fidel. Basically, he used to work at Apple. He's also the creator of Nest, um, which is the temperature gauge that helps you with the, your keeping the energy low. But he's basically just saying about the bad ways that habituation can be bad for us. So I'll let him talk and explain better than I ever could. But sometimes habituation isn't good. If it stops us from noticing the problems that are around us, well, that's bad. And if it stops us from noticing and fixing those problems, well, then that's really bad. 
Comedians know all about this. Jerry Seinfeld's entire career was built on noticing those little details, those idiotic things we do every day that we don't even remember. He tells us about the time he visited his friend, and he just wanted to take a comfortable shower. He'd reach out and grab the handle and turn it slightly one way, and it was 100 degrees too hot. And then he'd turn it the other way, and it was 100 degrees too cold. He just wanted a comfortable shower. Now, we've all been there. We just don't remember it, but Jerry did, and that's a comedian's job. But designers, innovators, and entrepreneurs, it's our job to not just notice those things, but to go one step further and try to fix them. So, if you haven't watched Tony's talk, it's really interesting, and I really uh, say watch it. Um, so basically, he says at the end of his talk about this thing with staying beginners, and what this means is basically we're looking at something with fresh eyes for the first time. So we come into the industry bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, we know, we're noticing everything around us. At Mix we have a few students working for us and they're just fantastic to have on board because they're always asking questions, they're so curious to know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, but when you answer with stuff like, that's the way we've always done it, um, maybe then it's time to start doing things differently. I mean, starting in design is really hard, as Stefan was saying, just about being a developer. Like, even in design, I feel it's harder because it's so, um, I can't remember the word, but it's just, it's just really hard to think that you're good at something when everyone else out there is doing really great things. So you usually end up with crippling anxiety or <laughs> going home like this, usually. It's just... Was it just me? But it doesn't go away. So welcome to the creative industry, everybody. This is, <laughs> this is how it's going to be. <laughs> but I wanted to look closer about how I was creating things and, and thought maybe there's a better way I can make things a little easier on myself. So I started to look at my habits and what made up my creative process. And I needed to start defining what was good and bad in order to change it. So a bad habit, this is definition, is a negative behavior pattern. So something that stops us doing our best work. It makes us feel bad, it impacts us ne negatively. For example, biting my nails and going home to watch Gossip Girl instead of practicing the design technique you really wanted to do. Um, it prevents us from doing something better to make ourselves grow. Um, a good habit is beneficial to one's physical or mental health. So if we think about the New Year's resolutions, we've probably already broken already. That could have benefited us greatly. Um, they help us along and help us create um, into what will help us build us to be a better person, really. So now I had some type of idea of what made up a good and a bad habit. I started to pick my brain, really, for going back through old projects to figure out parts of my process that I could change or that could be better replaced with good than rather a bad habit. So my first habit uh, was seeking approval at the wrong time. I don't know if anybody else does this. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, everyone wants approval for the work. They want to know we're doing a really good job. So an example of this was a recent project I was on. Um, I'd done the work. I'd been with the client. I knew exactly kind of what we needed to do. Um, however, I asked an opinion at the wrong time. So, and out of context as well. So instead of waiting a little bit longer and actually getting an opinion which was based on something, then does this look okay on this page? Um, I actually took someone's opinion, who higher up than me, who I respected, took it for gospel and didn't really question it, didn't question my own knowledge, just kind of dismiss, dismiss my own findings over someone who I thought knew better. And that really wasn't good because in the end I realised it's very wrong for me to do that because I knew the project, I knew and had knowledge of what I was actually meant to do. I knew the user, I knew what they wanted to do, and I'd been with the client, basically. So it was an out-of-context opinion, really, that filled me with self-doubt. Um, and it just needed to change. I needed to replace this with a better habit. So good habit number one that came out of that was trust your own opinion and knowledge. If you've been in that project and you know what you're meant to be achieving, don't let someone else come in and just tell you with their eyes. I mean, it's great having opinions, and obviously people higher up will know better than you, but it's knowing when to, one, ask, of, um, um, ask for opinion, 
and what about? So if I had waited a bit longer and just asked someone after I'd got a lot down, maybe asked a more in context question, such as does this color um, palette really represent the user's needs? Well, the user's needs, the brand they're trying to achieve. Um, I could have had a better opinion. So in the future, I need to be back at my opinion with some knowledge. Um, yeah, obviously don't be afraid to ask for help as long as you, if someone says why they think that, just be back it up with your own findings and your own knowledge. So the next two habits, um, I'll wait a bit longer to give um, my good habits to because they kind of go hand in hand. So my bad habit number two was using existing projects as a base to start from. I mean, why, why wouldn't you? Um, you know it's worked before. It's already been built. You can reuse the components again, and it's a quick job. Everyone's happy. Um, it's like going to your favorite restaurant. So you know what meal you're going to have. You don't need to figure out anything else. You know it's right for you. So reusing components isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, if you're working with a framework, we do mixed. Um, stuff can be copied, and it's great. We can work with a framework and everything, such as NHS work. We get to do it as we know the user needs it. So, but I realized I was kind of recycling the same thing, but that was really bad, though. I needed to stop and think fresh. What one for what worked for one client might not work for the next, and I was relying too much on previous knowledge rather than trying new things. So this knowledge of elements that I've worked with, that was great, but then reusing them in exactly the same way isn't so great. So the client really deserves something tailored to their needs and their users. I mean, it's like trying to make a square fit into a circle. It just might not fit for that right client. So my other habit was what I like to call overthinking blank page anxiety, which is looking at a blank page and thinking, oh my god, why am I here? <laughs> so if you want to see the thought, it's, it gives me a bit of anxiety to actually think about it. So your mind freezes and you start looking through other people's work and thinking how you're the worst designer ever and how did I ever get this job. But looking at in dribble for inspiration is great until you start putting yourself down and thinking that you're the crappiest designer ever and how did I not think of something like that. So I need to stop looking for inspiration in the wrong places and think, get it from elsewhere. I need to stop looking at myself critically and analyse what worked for other people in terms of technique and, for example, adding the shape over that image works really well. How could I do something in the same way, but not so, but a bit different? So this is the question, how do I be creative on demand? I feel as designers, we get given a project and it's like, go. You don't have time to kind of sit back, collect all your creativity into one and then let loose. So projects need to be turned over quickly. There's a limited time in which I can try and fail at something and get it out there. So these are easy solutions, the past habits, which obviously have changed and realized they were bad. So these habits don't really do anything for your growth. I need to get inspired and quickly. So some of these points I found work for me, might not work for everyone, but I feel being a bit transparent can help everyone. So my good habit number two was bring it back to the users and their needs. What's their mindset and behavior going to be when they come to use whatever I'm creating? What am I trying to achieve? So I need to look back at the user research, look back at empathy and mapping, which we do, identify the problems, basically, and write everything down. So I start making my maps, and then use it, putting the user in the center, and then building outwards. I mean, we're doing our work for a good reason, not just to make something look pretty. Um, and good habit number three was using word associations. I don't know if anybody uses this as a technique, but I found it really helpful. So I just write down the stream of conscious words about the project, really. Um, anything from adjectives to verbs, what the client does, what the users want, anything I felt was relevant and that came from the user research. And if you looked at all the words, you can try and see if there's any connections. And you might find some patterns. You might find anything that might spark an idea. Um, good habit number four, start thinking like a, like a child. So children, by means, don't habituate to stuff quite easily because they're still young. They've got a fresh mind. 
and especially in the ways of technology. They don't know how technology works. And in Tony's talk, what Tony Fidel talks about is thinking like a child, his kids ask him, why can't the mailbox notify me it has mail and then tell me? I mean, it's just a really good idea. Why can't it? So by thinking younger, we open ourselves up to poss possibilities that we probably would never have thought before. It all comes back to what we said about staying beginners and thinking with fresh eyes and looking at something as a beginner, not being part of the project before. So practice divergent thinking was another example of a good habit I need to start practicing, have started practicing. So it's divergent thinking, if you haven't heard of it, it's a, it's a thought process or method used to generate creative ideas by exposing many possible solutions. So it's all about thinking about the craziest possible thing you could do for a project and then using these ide ideas to converge down into something more realistic. So going from divergent to convergent thinking, it, it's great for tricking the mind into thinking really big. And it's good for ticking off a lot of things quickly by saying, OK, maybe that won't work for this. Let's do it in a different way. So it really streamlined my thought process and helped me arrive at a solution that really worked and that I knew worked because I ticked off a lot of options. So these are my like pep talk slides of how we can all stay creative and be happy in the creative industry and what with what we're doing. So bust out of your comfort zone. Like what's what's it gonna hurt? Like <laughs> Look at the web for examples, what you'd like to achieve, be inspired by the wealth of creative talent that's already out there, and try and push yourself to do something different. The more you explore and eliminate options, the more we can grow as a designer. Um, and stay inspired. Um, go for a walk, get away from the screen, get outdoors, clear your head, rely on your own findings rather than looking back at new stuff. So try different exciting ways to solve the problem rather than doing a similar thing thing over and over again, really get the creative juices flowing. And um, I asked on Twitter what happened, well, what everyone does to, to be inspired. And I got a lot of really great answers. So some was picking up a new hobby, traveling, um, just really going out of your comfort zone to experience something new. So these examples are really analyzing what good and bad. And I think I came to really good conclusions. Um, and the last I can leave you with is just keep creating. Get going out there, keep getting inspired, and keep doing what you love doing. So thank you.